going on guys what's up welcome to another video um, as you can tell from that intro I am no longer in Detroit I'm actually in Naples Florida it is hot down here it is it is way hot at least for me I'm not I'm that I got that northern blood but today since I'm in Naples I thought it was a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys about a new camera I got it's not new to the market but new to me and it fit a lot of needs that I have as a second B camera uh, you click on this link so you obviously know what the camera is but I wanted to at least tell you guys why I got this camera over some other options before we get started. So I have an EM1 Mark II, I'm filming you on that right now, and I think it's actually a very fantastic camera. And whether you shoot micro four thirds or you shoot full frame or APS-C, it doesn't matter, but most of the time, the main camera that you use is a big body camera. Um, even if you're shooting some of the smaller stuff, the body is still bigger. And a lot of times the size of that camera prohibits me from bringing my main camera with me on uh, family trips or work trips where maybe it's not appropriate to have a big camera on your on your shoulder or in your hand all the time but you still are doing some stuff that would warrant some good photos or some photography so I was looking for a camera that fit or checked off I should say a lot of boxes that would make the camera more portable for travel and inconspicuous so let's start with what those are number one and most important is pocketable. It's size. It's got to be small and inconspicuous. I can use it and then put it back in my pocket. Number two, I want the biggest sensor possible to have the best image quality possible while still maintaining that size. Number three, I wanted to have a flip up or a flip out screen so that if I vlog with it, I can see myself and frame myself. Number four, stabilization. Number five, mic input. And as you guys can tell from the title of this video, I ended up deciding on the Panasonic Lumix GX850. So let's talk about this camera for a second. And let's go down the list of things I just mentioned. Number one, the size. The size of this camera is its main selling point. Kinda. If you look, it's palm of my hand. Can I hold this up like this? It's it's small. It's smaller than my cell phone. Let me put grab my iPhone real quick. It's smaller than my iPhone. And this is a regular 10S. This isn't the 10S Max. Significantly smaller. Now, of course, it's thicker because you got a little lens going on there. But the size is amazing. In fact, the size of this camera is about the same as an LX10, the point-and-shoot version that Panasonic has. I'll put a bunch of pictures up here, 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 comparing this camera with different lenses on it and its size. So let's talk about the lenses for a second because the one thing that's unique about this camera is it is interchangeable lens mount. It is a micro four third sensor. So for a pocket camera, you get a big sensor and you can still get some really, really good images. And the reason why I ended up picking micro four thirds is not only because I shoot on EM1 Mark II and I have a micro four thirds camera and I can use the lenses that are compatible, although that was a big factor, is that APS-C, or I'm sorry, Micro Four Thirds lenses are small in general. You can get some great aperture, um, long lens lenses, long focal length lenses, that's how you say it, that are really, really, really small. The, the one that comes on this camera is the uh, 12 to 32 Pancake. Um, this thing's tiny, actually it's, when it collapses, it's like this. And so that makes this camera the same size, essentially, as an LX10 or RX100 or I don't know, G7X, whatever camera you use, it's a point and shoot, about the same size. Now, this lens isn't necessarily the best lens for a four third sensor because the aperture is from 3.5 to 5.6 and you want something a little wider to get the light in and the shallow depth of field. But there are some other lenses out there that are pancakes or smaller in stature that are fantastic lenses. One of the ones I own is the Leica 15 millimeter F1.7. That's not that big. Uh, again, the picture right here. Another lens that I don't own, but I might think about getting is the Panasonic 20 millimeter F1.7. It's about the same size as this. Uh, and the other one that's interesting for shelled up the field and some portraiture work is the 45 millimeter F1.8. Again, I'll put that picture right here. It's, it's small and you can put it in your pocket without it being obtrusive. 
Now other systems have small cameras, like you can get an APS-C camera, and that was one of the ones that's interesting. Um, I almost went for that. And you can even get full frame cameras that are smaller. Uh, some of the APS-C lineup would be like a Canon M100. Same kind of deal uh, where it doesn't have an EVF, and I'll talk about some of the shortcomings of this in a minute. Um, and it's missing some features, but it's a pretty small camera. But the problem is, even with its smaller M mount lenses on the Canon, it still sticks out significantly more than what this lens does. The only lens that keeps it about this same size, and it's still not the same size, is the 22 f2 fixed prime lens. That's the only option you really have. You go outside of that, you don't really have anything else you can put on that camera and keep it small and compact in your pocket. Uh, Fuji has uh, XA3, I think it is. That one was interesting. There are some smaller Fuji primes that are pretty good, um, but me being a micro four thirds and uh, having some experience with Panasonic, I'm a big fan, so I ended up going with the Panasonic stuff. When it comes to full frame, I mean, I guess you could get like the Sony RX1R, that's a $3,000 camera, full frame sensor, fixed lens. But for me, I wanted the ability to change my lenses and go from something that's either wide or portrait and have that flexibility and it still fits in my pocket. All right, so now for the other thing. Um, I had to make a requirement, and that was the flip out screen for vlogging and selfie. I don't do a lot of selfies, I'm not that guy, but I do see vlogging on run and gun and type stuff. And this camera does have the flip up screen, just like the Canon EOS M100 or the LX10, Panasonic LX10 or Sony RX100, blah, blah, blah. So there's no problem when you're, you're doing this, you can see yourself, there's no issue whatsoever. And so this was a must have because some of the other cameras where people might have said, well, why didn't you get maybe the GX85, the little bit bigger brother of this, because it has, it has inlet stabilization. Again, I'll talk about that in a second, but it doesn't have a flip out screen. And for me, especially with Panasonic that does contrast-based autofocus, it's important for me to uh, see myself, make sure I'm in focus. If I want to set it to manual focus, have that ability. It's really hard to do that when you don't have a screen that flips out and, and you can't see yourself. And regarding the GX85, even though if you put these kind of in, a, in just a picture looking, they look the same, if you look at the specs, the GX85 is quite a bit bigger than this, um, and it actually makes it much less pocketable. It's still a small camera by all means, but it's not as small as this little guy. So let's talk about some of the things I had to give up in order to get this LX10. Well, one was IBIS, um, and that was almost a deal breaker for me, and it, it's still something I have an issue with. Luckily, the lens that comes on this, the 12 to 32, has OIS, so you get some form of stabilization in the lens. And then there is uh, digital stabilization built in, but Panasonic doesn't do real good of that, real good job of that. Canon does a better job, but it doesn't have IBIS, um, which I guess was a trade-off I had to make in order to get some of those other things that were more important to me. And then the fourth thing is the mic input. Now, that wasn't a big deal to me because the, the camera I vlog on a lot because of convenience is the LX10. And I, a lot of times I found it's okay. I got to put some micro wind jammers on here. But I did okay from the audio department, and if audio was really important to me, I would just do audio put in post. I would just have a, uh, a mic, a lab mic hooked up and hook it to my iPhone or an external recorder and, and then sync the two in post, which is actually much easier than most people lead on to believe. So that wasn't a huge deal. It's a convenience for sure. And the reality of it is this. I have the EM1 Mark II sitting in front of me, and even if I made that small enough, they made a camera small enough like that, when you put a, a shotgun mic on top, there's no, it's just not pocketable anymore. So the reality is that never really was gonna happen while maintaining the form factor. So overall, this thing kind of checks the boxes that I needed for something that was small, uses my existing lens mount, took good images, because it's a 16 megapixel sensor, it took good images, takes good images, and it fits right in my pocket without, I mean, let me show you, hold on, let me show you this on. Look at this, I'm done with it, boom, it's here. It's not much bigger than, it's not much bigger than a cell phone. And to me, that's, that's awesome. It's super, super important. But there were a couple of the trade-offs I want to mention for you guys. If you're thinking about this camera, there's a couple things that are uh, tr obvious trade-offs besides the IBIS um, that I mentioned and, of course, the mic input. But there also is no viewfinder. So everything you do from a photo photographical standpoint is going to be composed on the back screen here. Um, not a big deal for me because I, I do a lot anyways where I'm holding the camera out and I'm looking. Not a big deal for me, but that is one thing. If you are one of the EVF guys, you don't have it in this one. Um, and I understand why to keep it this form, in this form factor, there's no way you could have put an EVF in here. Uh, battery life, um, I haven't really pushed it too much, but just looking at the battery and knowing this is the same battery as in the LX10, it probably isn't great, but I, the verdict's still out on that. Uh, 
fourth thing is that the SD card slot is actually micro SD. That's right, you heard that micro SD. This one's kind of interesting for me because I have to carry an adapter around all the time when I want to put uh, the SD card into my iPad and I do editing on LumaFusion. So that one's going to be interesting, but it is micro SD card. And then a couple other limits that are, are something you guys have to know if you're thinking about buying this camera. In 4K, I think the recording limit is five minutes. For me, not a big deal. I don't record in 4K very much. And if I do, a lot of times it's not long talking pieces like this. It's more blah, 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 two, three minutes, shut it down, do something else, come back. In 1080, I think there is a 30 minute recording limit, but don't quote me on that. That could be totally wrong. I haven't hit it. Again, I don't hit against those limits. But in saying that, the 4K image quality is really, really good on this camera. The 1080 image quality is really, really good on this camera. And it, it's really, really surprising. In fact, that whole opening montage that started this video was recorded solely on this. And I just did it like just real quick hand holding it. You can see some shaking, but I just did it like this. And the thing that was cool is I was carrying luggage through the airport. And I just threw this back in my pocket and I went to doing my thing. There was no big deal. Whereas if I had my EM1 Mark II out, I would not have been able to do that because I would have needed three hands. And God didn't bless me with three hands. So I have two. That's all I have. That's all I needed. It was pretty cool. So that's just a quick uh, um, update on what camera I bought. It's just for those moments where you want to be with your kids or your family or you're at a work outing or you're somewhere that you can't like stash your big camera. You want something small, inconspicuous, that takes good images. And it's interchangeable length. This camera is the jam. I think it's $550 brand new um, through like B&H or wherever you buy your camera stuff. I'll put some links below on Amazon. It's not a bad deal. I highly recommend it as a B camera. Uh, something complimentary to your big camera. It's, it's pretty awesome. So that's it. I, I hope I covered everything. If you have some questions or comments below, please let me know. Oh, I do want to mention one more thing. If you guys are big manual video shooters, where you're trying to set the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed for a certain look explicitly, it doesn't let you do it. You can force the aperture into a certain standpoint and then let the shutter and the ISO do its thing. That's what I do. Because again, I don't like screwing around with, I like convenience is king. I don't think you guys notice very often, if at all, I do that a lot. I'll just put an aperture priority, boom, hit it and start recording, let the camera do the work. So if you're big into manual video, that's one other thing. But it's, you, to, you gotta take the trade-offs for something you can put in your pocket and get good image quality out of. Okay, that's it. I recommend it, great camera, thanks for watching. And uh, before I go, let you go check this out. I'm gonna take you guys out on my balcony because the same Michigan. Look at that. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments below, check it out. I'll try to take some images with this this week, and uh, I'll see you next time.